My group needs to get together because they don't want me to talk in the zero for that. We have another checkpoint today. It is not a group one. Okay. Um, before I say that, I almost forgot to say it last period, so let me start off with this period. There's a math workshop test on Monday. We, I keep forgetting about it, keep forgetting to make it happen. It's mostly factoring with a couple simplifying radicals, and I think there is one that has a picture of a graph, and you're supposed to identify, like, since it's an M, it's X to the fourth, and since it's pointing down, it's got a negative leading coefficient. Like, really easy things. Shouldn't be a big deal. Should be a nice grade booster, but we shall see. So, math workshop test Monday. You might want to make a note to yourself. So, even if you finish everything, it'd be smart to look over the math workshops this weekend. I meant to remind you about it all week and make it Friday, but alas, that did not happen. Okay, so our problem today is about a cylinder. A right circular cylinder is shown below with dimensions given in inches, which you need to pay attention to because sometimes they make you convert. Thankfully, not this one. It says, what is the total surface area of the cylinder in square inches? So, it would have been a problem if they, had then, if they had said yards or something. We would have had to do some unit conversions, but thankfully, we don't. And then they're so nice, we're actually supposed to already know how to find the area of a cylinder. Literally, you could take the area of the rectangle and add the two circle areas to it, and you would get the right answer. But they, they thought we couldn't handle it, so they gave us a formula. And they said the total surface area of a cylinder is given by 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And then I don't know why they thought we were this dumb, because we are not. They had to tell us what R was, like we didn't know R was the radius of a circle. And H is the height. So I just, whew. So if you plug in the numbers and you solve, can someone please tell me the answer? Yes. Can you tell me the answer with just pies? Which is? Two pi plus six pi is how many pi? Okay, that's all. Okay, so table five can have two points. So they did two pi, they plugged in a one, because our radius is one. They plugged in a one again, because there's that R again. And then the height of the thing is three, so they plugged in a three. 1 squared is still 1. We end up having a 2 pi here. 2 times 1 times 3 is just 6 pi. So you have 8 pi. So it's 8 pi inches squared because it said square inches plus its area. Um, Ellie was at first telling me her answer already in decimal points, which was great. We don't know because they didn't specify if they want the answer to include pi or not. So she did 8 times 3.14, or 8 times her pi button, she got it's 25 point something, so a little higher than 24. So that's perfect. Okay, now let's go on to our notes from yesterday. We actually, not that we didn't get stuff accomplished yesterday, but we didn't do anything that had to do with our learning target yesterday. All we did yesterday was simplify radical expressions and our learning target for the past few days and said I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. We didn't add, we didn't subtract, we didn't multiply, we definitely didn't divide. All we did was simplify and that took some serious time. Um, today we're actually going to go out of order. I don't want to do the bottom ones first. I want to go to the back top. I want to add and subtract first. We have three problems that involve addition and subtraction. Can you tell me something interesting about those three problems involving addition and subtraction? Their index is all two, yes. And our, uh, Gilbert has group gets a point. Notice it's a two, it's an understood two, understood two, understood two. Everybody has an understood two. The first problem without an understood two today is... Whew. The first problem without an understood index of two is what number? <coughs> Okay, 
that doesn't have an understood two on the index? Yeah, number two down here, but no offense, that took way too long, so I'm going to keep my points to myself. Okay, so we're going to start off with one number one. Now, we could have problems with higher indexes. I don't know why we're only doing two today. Again, I don't know why they, you know what, it's Friday, so that's fine. That's, that's great. We can do this. We need to somehow see if we can combine these two. Right now, it's not possible. It's as if we have 4x plus 3y, and those just aren't like terms. We can't combine them at the moment. But maybe somehow we can simplify our radicals. We can simplify the 8. We can simplify that square root of 50. And maybe we'll end up having like a 4x and a 3x, which would give us a 7x. Like we need them to have the same number under the house. That's what we're hoping for today. Okay, so first things first, let's simplify that 8. What times what is 8? Yes, so 4 times 2. Now what comes out? A 2 comes out, and then so we've got 8 square roots of 2. Terrific. If someone can handle the 3 square roots of 50, they can get themselves a point. And then keep going. It is 25 and 2. So now what? The 5 comes out. So in the last line, I'm going to have 15 square root of 2, and he can get his point. And finally, now that we've simplified the square root of 8 and we've simplified the square root of 50, they both have the same number under the radical. So we can add them together. 8 plus 15 is 23, so our answer is 23 square roots of 2. Yay. Now let's do the exact same thing, but with a 98. What times what is 98? Not Gilberto. Yes, that's probably true, but neither of those are perfect squares. Yes, table two gets their point. It's 49 and 2. So I've actually got 7 square roots of 2. Now if only we can simplify that square root of 32. So it also can combine with somebody. 4 and 8 would work. I don't disagree, but there's a bigger one. It's 16 and 2. Yes, 5 get a point. Another reason why I knew I wanted 16 and 2 is because I'm thinking things through. I want the 2's to combine. Okay, I know the square root of 16 is 4. I have that left. And then what would my final answer be? What was my final answer? Tell me. Did I do something wrong? I'm with you. I thought. Mm -hmm. Assuming negative square roots of two, and then that makes me question my whole life. Is that the same answer I got last period? No, because last period I left off my minus sign and I added. Oh, poop. Oh well, I fix it tomorrow. Monday. I fix it Monday. Ooh. Now I know why he was asking me that question. I was confused. I thought he was already on number three now. Ooh, golly. Thank you, Emory, because you and I were on the same page. So I'm going to give Emory a point because we were on the same page. <laughs> Thank you, the rest of you, for having the right answer. Me and Emory were on the same level. <laughs> okay, so 5 square roots of 12. I need to break that down. What will it be? Yeah. So what comes out? Okay. Okay, so then fives handled that one so they can have their point. Some other group handled the two and twenty-seven. Okay, nine and, and say so what now? Oh, okay, that's fine. I don't know, my mind just said nine and eight and I was confused. Now what comes out? 
Okay. And then so my answer is going to be, okay, everything's looking good. And Karen's group can have a point. And then, my goodness, surely some other group can handle the 128. Something and something is 128. You know, she's probably right. But I'm noticing a pattern. We keep having a three. We keep having a three. I'm hoping it's something with three. So why don't you, in your calculator, which would not be two or five because they already got points, um, 128 divided by three. Is it? How sad. Aw, oh, are you sure? 128 divided by 3? Can I not do math last period? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I can't do math last period. Okay. Well, what did you say was 128 in the exam? Eight and sixteen. So that means there has to be a higher one. Please tell me. Two and sixty-four. That's what I was wanting. I think we did three and sixty-four last period. Bless you, Elizabeth. You can have two points because I was feeling real dumb. Okay, so square root of sixty-four is eight. And man, first period math is not so great. I swear I get better with time. So I'm going to combine my like things, but they're not all alike, are they? So I've got 16 square roots, and that's a 6. Yes, and you can have a point for understanding not to put those things together. Bless you, ma'am. So my answer is 10 plus 6, which is 16. And then the 8 square roots of 2 can't combine with anyone because he doesn't have the same number under the radical. But somehow I made it work last period. So many questions, so little time. Mm, 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 mm. Are there any questions about adding or subtracting? Okay, now we get to multiply. Multiplying is fun, except on 3 and 4. What do we have to do on 3 and 4 that doesn't look like fun? Yes, Karen said the term I was looking for, foil. And we're going to have to foil. And there is at least one person in this room who cannot foil. I don't, I got so many questions that I'm going to let it go for now. So we will slowly foil today. Okay, before we get there, let's do one and two. We want the numbers on the outside first. So six and four is gonna give us 24, and then we multiply the numbers under the radical together. So eight and two, which is gonna give us 16. C to the third times C to the one. We add our exponents because we're multiplying, so C to the four and D to the eighth, perfect. So literally, multiply people on the outside, multiply people under the radical together. Is that it? Can we not simplify this? I think we can. Don't we know the square root of 16? Okay, so we know that's 4. Can we break down c to the 4th? The square root of c to the 4th. So that should be c to the what? Yes, and then d to the... Uh-huh, and I know that 1's going to get a point along with... 2 and 5. Poor 4 today. They're normal chatty people. They're not here. Okay, I'm still not done. Yes, Ellie, but you've got so many points. You're going to let me keep going. Yes, you do multiply 4 and 24 and get the 96 C squared D to the 4th. Okay, we get to our next one, which looks like just a ton of fun, especially with that index of a 4 on the outside of that radical. Okay, I multiply, I get 6. I have 16, x to the 8, y to the... Woo! Add those exponents. Okay, and but we've yet to deal with that fourth root part. So, yes... Oh, can I zoom in further on that? That's kind of far away. Yes, 2 times 3 is 6. Yes, 8 times 2 is 16. 3 plus 5 is 8. 2 plus 2 is 4. Yes, all of that is completely correct. Now, can we do something further? What is the fourth root of 16? 
It's okay. It's okay. I know. We've done square roots for so long. It's 2 because 2 to the 4th is 16. Again, we've talked about how I figured that out. Or, of course, you can always put that in your calculator to figure it out as well. Okay, so we dealt with the 16. It should be x to the what power now? Yes, because 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then y to the 1, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. I'm going to write it for this moment, but you and I both know in real life we're not going to write it. And so my final answer would be 12x squared y. Okay, so I'm going to speak to him for like half a second. Ellie's going to hand you your new checkpoint. You can go ahead and knock out 1 and 2 while I, That's a lie. You can knock out 1, 2, and 4 while I speak to him for half a second. When I get done speaking to him, we got to finish this, though. Yay. Okay, let's foil. If we foil quickly and then we have to divide, and then you can go back to that checkpoint, Ellie, so nicely handed you. Okay. Um... When you FOIL, FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. <laughs> so first, meaning the two first people. So six times two, I get 12. Three times five, I get square root of 15. First. And then outer, or on the outside. <laughs> six times four, I get 24. Three times two, I get square root of six. Inner, negative 5 times 2, I get negative 10, and I just have the square root of 5. He doesn't have a friend I multiply him with. And last but not least, last, because they're the last terms in the two binomials, negative 5 times 4, I get negative 20 square roots of 2. Now, what really stinks is we would like from here to simplify and maybe combine some like terms, but 15 is just three and five. Neither of those are perfect squares. Six is just two and three. Neither of those are perfect squares. So literally this is our answer. This is the best we could do on this problem. Because there's no way we can combine these radicals because they don't have the same number underneath. Now hopefully we can combine some on four, and even if we can't, you always need to check to see if you can, because, you know, if this was a 16, well, hey, I know the square root of 16 is four, so you can keep going, but sad day, well, not a sad day, it makes life easier. Good day, we can't go any further on this one. Okay, number four, we're going to foil on it. So first, I get 28 square root, so 12, can someone tell me what I get with the outer? I heard you say it loud for me. Square root to what? Okay, thank you. And then for the inner? Uh huh. And then someone other than Ellie and Justice's group for the last? Someone, Bueller. Yes, Sam, tell me. Yes, bless you. And you can have another point for your group. Okay, so this one's looking a little better. In fact, if we had been a little smarter, we maybe could have saved ourselves some time. At the beginning, when I saw that square root of 12 and I realized, hey, that reduces to two square root of three, I could have changed this term to begin with to be a little simpler before I foiled. Do you have to do that? No. But hey, if you realize something simplifies before you bother to do all math, simplify it. Okay, so now let's see if we can break these down any and combine some like terms. Let's start in the front. So what times what is 12? 4 and 3. So 4 comes out. Square root of 4 is 2. So I've got... So I need to know 28 times 2. So I've got 56 square roots of 3. We'll give 5 the point for handling that one. Now someone handle the 21 square roots of 24. What times was 20? And we don't want 8 and 3. Neither of those are perfect squares. So 
six and four, and then two comes out, so we've got a square root of six. Now what? 42 square root of six. Okay, so far not so good. The pink guy and the red guy, they don't combine. Because square root of three, square root of six, they're not going together. But may, maybe, I mean, we are simplifying. Maybe if we keep going, we'll look into something. Okay, the square root of 18 is what times what? Of course. And then the three comes out. I don't know how many points y'all have, but if you're not at a five, Amory, y'all can definitely go to a five. You've been very helpful today. Oh, I just kept going, Ellie. I didn't even let you tell me. I'm sorry. I got so excited. Yes, the 3 comes out, 12 times 3 is 36. So, sad day, I've got a square root of 3, a square root of 6, a square root of 2, nobody's combining. Oh, and last but not least is the easiest one, because I know the square root of 36. It's, it's 6, and 9 times 6 is 9 times 6. Thank you, ma'am. You can have your point. Okay, but again, sad day. We were hoping people were going to get to combine, and we don't. That is our final answer. Now, did we simplify it a lot from after we foiled? Yes. But were we able to combine anyone? No. But hopefully, we'll come across a problem where we can. Yes, dear? Well, you're wanting it in simplest form anyway, so you're going to have to do all the work anyway. Sad day. But yeah, you know how on number three, I kind of knew I wanted it to be th a three because the other two had been a three and then it wasn't a three. Like you can kind of logic through it, yes. Okay, we've got some good news and bad news. The good news is we are dividing. We're going to do the ones on the previous page. The bad news is we're not doing the three on the bottom here. The reason being is because here you finally get to be special and be different than pre-AP. Because otherwise, I swear a lot of the time we do the same thing in both classes. So, should have taken pre-AP. Um, we are going to rationalize the denominator. Our problems are only going to have one thing in the denominator. So, just the square root of 3 or just the square root of 2, not a square root of 3 minus 2. We're not going to do any like this. However, we have in the past discussed it. You would have to multiply by the conjugate. So, if you're interested in it. We would multiply by, so it was a minus, so we would multiply by the plus version. We've actually talked about that before. It's been a long time. A long, long time. We were actually doing conjugates when we were doing complex numbers. But don't worry. We're not going to do that. I just wanted to say those words in case you were interested. We're going to keep it simple. So if you flip back to the front. We need to rationalize the denominator. So when we divide, darn division always has the most rules because of that you can't have zero in the denominator. And just it always has the most rules. When you divide, you cannot have a square root or any other radical in the denominator. So like on number one, we have to fix it because that six can't say that square Excuse me. That square root of 6 cannot stay in the denominator. It's a problem. So we rationalize, and what we're calling rationalizing is we multiply the numerator and the denominator by whatever our issue is. Our issue is the 6, so we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 6. And that just seems dumb because you're like, but Miss Compton. You're saying the problem was the fact that there was a square root in the denominator, so your solution is to multiply by square roots. But it actually ends up working out nicely. 2 times 6, we end up getting square root of 12. 6 times 6, we get square root of 36. I know the square root of 36. What's the square root of 36? So every single time, you end up with a denominator with no radical in it. It's always going to end up being a perfect square. Thank you, Angel. You can have a point. Can I break down that 12 any? It's 4 and 3. So I've got 2 square roots of 3 over 6. And then sadly, I can go one more step from here. I can simplify a fraction. Can anyone tell me what that fraction simplifies to? Oh. 
It is. So Ellie said this. And she knows that I'm not going to write the one. Yes, two goes into six three times, so we can reduce it in that way. But I'm not going to write the one. You get most of your points in life if you're here. I wouldn't. No, I would say like, hey, is the number outside the radical, can it somehow simplify with the number in the denominator? And if it can, simplify, and if not, no, don't leave it be. Okay, so let's try number two. First of all, I'm going to give them each their own house. Now that they each have their own house, it's a little easier to say, okay, my problem is that square root of 8. So I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 8. When I do that, 8 times 8 is 64. I end up with square root of 64 in the denominator. And I end up with square root of 8 into the third in the numerator. But I know the square root of 64 is 8. And then the question is, can I break down that 8 into the third? Mm-hmm. It would be 4 and 2. And you get, if you know this, you don't have to show this many steps. Okay, I know the square root of 4 is 2, so I've got a 2 square root of 2 into the third. All divisible by 8. No one disagrees with that. However, I wish Angel had, well, I didn't ask her to. She's not psychic. I wish Angel had dealt with that into the third while she was dealing with that eight. But I could have asked her to. I didn't. I can do the square root of into the third. What comes out, what stays underneath. And in comes out. And in stays underneath because into the third. And then am I done here? We can. The 2 will go into 8. So my final answer is n square root of 2n all divided by 4. But again, if if Angel gets here, she's getting most of her points. Next step is just can she simplify a fraction? I hope so. If not, life's going to be okay. Okay, we'll do one more, one more only, and then I'll let you get back to your checkpoint. Let's do number 3 at the bottom. So I multiply by the square root of 8. I multiply by the square root of 8. I get square root of 40x over the square root of 64. Now what? What do I have in the denominator? What do I have in the denominator? Okay, I have an 8 in the denominator, and then go with the numerator and say what you wanted again, Gilberto. Okay, I need two numbers and multiply to 40. 10 and 4 is perfect because 4 is perfect square. That's good. So I've got two square roots of 10x over 8. Yes, so that's going to simplify, yes, LA. So 2 and 8, will get, that's divisible, so square root of 10x. Over four. Perfect. Okay, you have a checkpoint. I don't care if you work with your group, but it's not a group checkpoint. I, I need to see each person's. It's not due till end of class on Monday, so chill out. But we do have a lot to do on Monday as well, so be smart to go ahead and get knock it out of the way.